Hi, my name's Sylvia Mack. I'm age 53 and I'm from London. When I was two and a half years old, I suffered third and fourth degree burns to my body during a, an accident at home. Uh, me and my sister was playing around a game of hide and seek and I hid behind the bathroom door and she pushed me and I fell back into a bowl of boiling water that my mum had laid on the bathroom floor. It took quite a long time for my scars to heal um, because I was on life support for about three weeks. I wasn't expected to survive and um, I had to go on to have quite a lot of skin grafts um, just to patch up areas of where I'd been severely burnt as it had left quite a big hole in my back. Um, so I was in the hospital for quite a long time and um, the hospital ward was mixed with a lot of adults. It wasn't a children's ward and it was quite scary. Throughout my life, um, the scarring really did affect me quite severely, um, especially sort of like going into secondary school and I noticed that, um, you know, the boys liked the girls and we had to do lots of things like PE and I had to wear very short shorts which showed my scarring. There were times where I couldn't eat too much um, because of the scarring on my tummy, so I'd have to sit on a, a bench and hold my tummy, pretending that I had period pains. Um, so it was quite difficult. And then as I left school and relationships began to form, I found it quite difficult because each relationship that I went into, I had to explain that I had scars on my body before um, you know, going any further into the relationship and it, it would be up to the, the boy or the man whether they were happy with that or not and sometimes they'd just walk away and not, you know, come back, um, which was quite sad. Um, so obviously I went into quite a deep state of depression. I found it really difficult to deal with the depression. Um, obviously, as I said, I went on to have suicidal thoughts and um, during the time that I'd had my children, because I, I went on to have three children with someone that accepted my scars, um, I began to leave notes to my eldest daughter who actually was about eight years old then and um, I'd leave notes under her pillar to um, explain that mummy won't be there no more and um, yeah, quite, quite difficult thinking about it. Um, and um, yeah, I used to get up the next day and quickly remove the, the notes because it was always for the love of my family and the love of my children that I couldn't sort of carry on to do any type of, um, you know, actions from my suicidal thoughts and it was just continuing to have them. I tried to get help, but it was very difficult back then. In my sort of like mid forties, everything seemed to change. And it was only because um, I now had um, a grandchild um, and I, my son was getting older and I really didn't want them to see me in a state of depression, anxieties and all of those things. Um, it was quite worrying because I hid myself away in my bedroom quite a lot, literally would not leave, leave my room at times. And I just didn't want my son, especially because he was the youngest, to see his mum crying and upset and and um, never coming out of her room. And I thought, I really need to do something to change this. Whilst on holiday, something really awful happened, actually. A, a man was filming me. I had a bikini on and um, like a cover up, but I kind of dropped the cover up a little bit and he was laying behind me on a sun lounger and he just kept, he had the phone up high and he, he was basically following me, filming my scars. 
Um, and all I could think at the time was, okay, I'm gonna be, cov I'm just gonna be viral on YouTube. I'm gonna be the ugliest woman in the world with scarring on her body and everyone's gonna see it, everyone's gonna know it. And because of the negative mindset that I was already in, I got so angry and so, I was bitter, frustrated, and um, I actually began to swear at this man and, and he quickly got up and walked away because he, you know, obviously he didn't want to have to deal with, with me. And um, my mum said, look, let's just, let's go down to the beach, get away. As I began to walk down to the water's edge, I had like this sarong over me, but I kind of had it, I didn't wear it tied up here or around my waist. I had it covered up around my neck <laughs> just because I don't want anyone to see my scars at all. And, I, you know, I look like Superwoman with this, <laughs> with this sarong over my shoulders. And as I got halfway down towards the beach, um, or the, the water's edge, I turned around and I can see my mum and uh, uh, it looked like her face was literally in the sand. Her head was hung so low. And I knew at that moment that she was thinking about my scars, how I was feeling, what just happened to me. And, and it, it, was, it was that moment that hit me and something just changed. My whole life changed. Because uh, <laughs> I realised that my mum had suffered for so many years. Because um, clearly, like what had happened to me as a child, it was hurting her as well. And I had to um, change her life because I didn't want her to feel like that anymore. So um, I carried on down to the water's edge and everything, I just felt like something had lifted from me. And I turned around and I dropped my sarong and I was now wearing a bikini. <laughs> And um, as I turned around, I just shouted out to my mum and I waved to her and I just said, Mum, Mum, like, look at me, look at me. I was so proud of myself, so proud of me and what I'd done. And, and I was doing it for her as well. And she just started smiling, waving back at me. But the funniest thing was I literally felt like I was on a runway. Like, I actually felt like everybody was looking at me but in a good way and I began straight my way back <laughs> down to my mum and when I got there you know I just put my hand on her shoulder and said everything's going to be okay I'm okay mum and we just went on and had the most wonderful holiday and um, yeah everything changed from then it, it was the best thing that could have happened to me even though it was the worst thing but it was the best thing <laughs>when I arrived back home, I had to keep that momentum going of me learning to love myself, love my body, and doing something about um, what had happened to me in the past, making sure I could change that. Not exactly change that, but change it for others, because I didn't want people to go through what I'd been through. So yeah, I contacted my cousin and he helped me set up Love Disfigure. Great name, I loved it. Um, and I shared a video online, which was the hardest thing for me to do. And it was really emotional. Um, and I am an emotional person. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it was quite a difficult thing, showing off my scars for the first time and then sharing it on Facebook. But the messages of support were absolutely out this world. You know, I can't thank people enough for in saying I, I was an inspiration, but they were inspiring me to c carry on and do what I was doing. My proudest achievement in life would definitely be with Love This Figure, um, creating a very small Facebook group and um, grow into you know over 3,000 people and then connecting to people globally like just all around the world different countries India Australia America 
um, people from all around the world contacting me, it just blows my mind because, you know, not having one person to talk to about my scars and now being able to connect with people around the world is just, yeah, it's mind blowing. My biggest achievement. <laughs> My name is Sylvia and this is my voice.